nothing to report. Rather be cold than touch that stuff. How far will this lyrium spread?
My interest you, sir. What is it? something? Or are you just here to admire the dwarf? Tell me the truth, Varric. Do you actually think I was sent by Andraste? Oh, shit. This is going to be awkward. I guess I do. Either you're guided by the hand of some higher power, or you have the worst luck. you as an Andrastian. It's a great story. It's got heroism, love, betrayal, and random musical numbers. What's not to like? I don't have a nug in this race. It could be bullshit, it could be true. I'll never know. But I like the idea that maybe you could save the world with a song. Why are those my only options? Look at all the shit that's happened to you. You were saved from the explosion that leveled a mountaintop and fell out of the Fade. You traveled through time, faced down one of the ancient magisters who started the Blights, had a mountain fall on you, and lived. One of those things would be impossible. All of them together? That's a miracle. So on the basis of my extraordinarily bad luck, you think I'm Andraste's herald? If you know the story of Andraste, you know that bad luck is sort of her thing. If you've got questions, I'm your dwarf. Can I ask you something, Varric? You want to talk about me? Th nope. I can spare some time. What do you need? I want to know more about Red... 
tell you what I can. What could the Templars want with it? In Kirkwall, just having the Lyrium Idol made Knight Commander Meredith impossibly strong. Before it turned her into a Lyrium statue, anyway. Maybe they thought the power was worth it, or maybe they didn't know the consequences. I think that's enough. Talk later. Goodbye. The Inquisitor's work is never done, I see. I should go. You know where I'll be. It doesn't surprise me you found the Wardens mixed up in all this. From first-hand experience, you should be wary any time my old order is involved. I trust everything is well with the mages. Most are pleased with the Alliance, even if we wonder what will happen next. I'll leave you... Here is the request Harris made. Should I wait for his reply? That is at his discretion. Ooh, Inquisitor! Greetings. Oh, I was recently course, appointed by Sister Liliana to keep her books in order. I'm so pleased to be here, helping out in my small way. Well, I should get back to work. One day I'm going to read all these books. One day, when I have time. I'm listening. They called you the left hand of the divine. That they did. What of it? What is the point of an inquisition? Justinia would have started the inquisition if the divine conclave failed to restore peace. She hoped that with enough support, we could challenge the very tenets of the Chantry. She wanted the Chantry to treat the mages fairly. But sometimes I wonder. Why stop at mages? The Chantry has committed many injustices. If we're going to change it, why not change the whole thing? <sighs> it's just a thought. None of this will be possible if we fail. I'll try not to break anything. That's good to hear. I could use the left hand of the Divine at my side out there. Every agent out in the world is my eyes, my ears, my blade. Wherever my people are, I am also. Coming with you, leaving my post, would blind and bound me. Do you see? What exactly does the left hand of the Divine do? A Divine always has enemies, and Justinia had more than most. I watched, had an ear to every door. I identified threats, and I dealt with them. Why did Justinia have so many enemies? There were many who felt she was unfit to be divine. She had a past, a worldly life. Unlike many, she wasn't given to the Chantry as a child. She chose it, and somehow that made her unworthy. And because they thought she was unworthy, they wished her harm. It sounds like you did some unscrupulous things as the left hand. Perhaps. But wouldn't you do anything to protect what you love? We'll talk more later. Yes? Anything I should know? I have nothing to report at the moment. I'll leave you to your work. ask you about the circ of course what do you wish to know if the circle disbanded how can you still belong to it the circle
circle is an idea, my dear, and an idea cannot be dissolved. Many of the first enchanters voted for rebellion, caring little that anything short of a unanimous decision would pit mage against mage. Rather than dissolving it, Grand Enchanter Fiona's vote split the circle in two. The rebels follow her, the loyalists follow me. If you lead all the loyalists, why are you only first enchanter and not grand enchanter? Grand enchanters are elected, and since there are no first enchanters besides myself, no vote can be held. I could name myself Grand Enchanter, but the title holds no meaning now. When the circles are restored, that will change. What was it like to live in a circle? My dear, your question is the root of all problems with mages. I cannot tell you. Every circle was different. Their Templars were different, their politics unique. And every person within each tower had an experience of circle life unique to themselves. Some people suffered and some were content. Some were cruel, some compassionate, and some indifferent. The same is true of people everywhere, in all circumstances, whether they are mages or not. So tell me about your personal experience with the circle. I enjoyed life in the Montsimard circle, my dear. It was an edifice devoted to knowledge and refinement. And mages need the company of other mages. No one else can truly understand the challenges we face, nor see the world as we do. You must have been under constant supervision, being forced by Templars to live in the tower. Was that hard to endure? My dear, I have a suite in the palace and a wing at my dear Duke Bastien's estate. I've never been forced to live anywhere. Most circles allowed mages to live away from the tower, either on their own or in service to the nobility. All that was required was permission from the first enchanter. Some circles were harsher in their restrictions. Kirkwall was the worst, but it was the exception. Most were quite permissive, perhaps too permissive in retrospect. How did we come to this state with the circles in revolt? A failure of perspective that infected circle leadership. Mages lived solely in a world of Templars and mages. They could not even imagine what was beyond the tower walls. Kirkwall gave the world a reason to remember its fear of magic. A mage killed hundreds with a snap of their fingers. Across Thedas, a new tangible fear of magic grew. Commoners and nobles alike called out to the Chantry for protection. But the malcontents in the towers thought nothing of this. They cared only for themselves and for their anger at the new Templar restrictions. When a mage attempted to assassinate Divine Justinia, again, the mages protested the investigation. The leadership chose to vote on independence based on the intolerable conditions imposed by the Templars, sparing no thought to the fact that magic was more feared in the aftermath of these attacks than it had been since Tevinter's day. So long as they had their freedom, they could care little for riots, angry mobs, or about pitting mages against each other. Are you familiar with Grand Enchanter Fiona? We've met. Before her horrendously ill-timed and selfish vote for independence, I thought her adequate at her job. In her dotage, she could not handle looking after the well-being of so many people. We would have done better to replace her years ago, to let her spend time gardening. Did they have cause to rebel? In the aftermath of their terrorist attacks? Was that really the most opportune time to break away? By all means, protest abuses by the Templars. Just don't do it in a way that says mages support wholesale murder. By voting when they did, my colleagues all but declared war upon the ordinary people of Thedas. A war in which we are outnumbered a hundred to one. I thought the fighting was only between mages and Templars. Why are mages fighting mages? The vote for independence was carried by only a small margin. But Fiona chose to let the motion stand. Those who opposed a rash declaration of war against the entire free world had little choice. By breaking from the Chantry when they did, the rebels declared themselves in support of mass murder. Anyone who did not wish to support terrorism and the slaughter of innocents was forced to take arms against the rebels.